Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, some parts of you are edible. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, some parts of you are medicinal. Oh, hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about Douglas fir. It's a tree that most of us in Western North America are familiar with because we use it as a Christmas tree. But did you know some parts of it are edible and some other parts of it, or some of the same parts of it, are also medicinal? Well, they are. I'll tell you about them. Douglas fir. Scientific name is Pseudosuga menzaisi. And uh, there are a couple of varieties in BC and uh, in Western North America. The one that I'm showing that's around here is the interior one, interior Douglas fir. And the variety is Glauca, so Pseudosuga menzaisi Glauca. And then the, there's the coastal Douglas fir, Pseudosuga menzaisi menzaisi. They are found from BC, southern BC, and western Alberta, as far south uh, down to California. And uh, the uh, that's for the coastal and interior ones. The interior ones, they uh, as they go, their distribution it goes, it goes like southwestern or it goes eastward as it goes down south towards the Mexican border, whereas the coastal variety stays along the coast and stays typically uh, west of the Cascades. Pretty cool to see one of these guys out. Hanging out in a Douglas fir. There are a few other names that the uh, Douglas fir goes by. The coastal one, sometimes called the Oregon pine or the Colombian pine, and uh, the interior one is sometimes called the Rocky Mountain Douglas fir. One of the ways to help you identify a Douglas fir is by the cones. This is one of the cones, and if you look, you can see there are these three pronged bracts which extend beyond the scales, and they kind of look like a mouse, like the back end of a mouse. So there's, you know, the three things that are sticking out with the one extending the furthest in the middle. And the needles like because they look kind of like a spruce tree and some others but they are soft to the touch something that'll help you distinguish between the coastal variety and the interior the coastal variety has the, the cones are a little longer like 10 centimeters long compared to eight and also the the coastal variety has dark uh, like a deep green color to the needles, whereas the the interior is sort of bluish green, lighter color. Douglas fir is a large conifer, and they're typically 25 to 35 meters tall, but they can be as much as 80 meters tall with a trunk diameter of a meter. And it's called Douglas fir, but it's not a true fir. And uh, this tree dominates from BC to California, it can be found in dry to moist and mixed, dry to moist uh, conditions in mixed conifer forests from sea level to middle elevations. And uh, their range is expanding, and that could be or is, is likely uh, partly due to fire suppression. And uh, the range is expanding because, uh, as I guess, as there's less forest fires. The Douglas fir can outcompete with some of the other native trees from the in the area, such as the ponderosa pine. And you can see the battle playing out here. Douglas fir, ponderosa pine. It's getting intense. One of the ways that Douglas fir can be used as food 
is by eating the young twigs and needles and that should be in the spring you can tell the new growth here uh, this is fall late fall uh, so this is not the time of year to eat it but I'll try it anyway yeah I think you should probably wait for spring another source of food that the Douglas fir could be used for is the soft inner bark could be eaten but that would be only maybe in an emergency an emergency survival food and if you were to do it you because it the plant uses it to move uh, like nutrients and stuff within the plant so if you took a whole band out from around the trunk then that would you know kill the plant so but whatever if it's a survival I guess for a survival situation you might need to do that and uh, other than eating the young twigs and needles, they can be used to make a tea. Boiling them or cooking them to make a tea, which is rich in vitamin C. And I heard that people are concerned about sickness lately, so extra sources of vitamin C could be useful. In some conditions, like some hot sunny days, uh, white crystals of sugar can appear on the needle tips of the Douglas fir and the interior Salish people called this tree breast milk and apparently is very sweet and could be used to sweeten things. And here we have an example of a young Douglas fir surrounded by ponderosa pine. Be careful young tree. Oh, he's got some backup over there. Here's a close-up of a Douglas fir trunk. Some of the medicinal uses for Douglas fir include the dried sap was chewed to relieve cold symptoms and the pitch, which uh, this pitch is like maybe like the consistency of dried uh, honey. If you leave your honey in the cupboard and it gets dry, that uh, the it's a solid secretion from the tree. It could be used on cuts and boils and sores and other skin problems to aid healing and prevent infections. Another medicinal use of Douglas fir is the bark. It can be used to make a tea to stop intestinal bleeding and intestinal tract bleeding and relieve diarrhea. And here we see the battle rage on. Mostly Ponderosa around here. So there's some information about Douglas fir. And uh, hopefully you'll find you found it interesting. And when you go out, if you're going out looking for a Christmas tree, it'll be a little bit more interesting this time. Because you know a little more about it. Uh, recently I just got over 100 subscribers, which is pretty cool. So if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And maybe consider subscribing. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching.